I'm Lacey Madden and I'm a volunteer marriage and family counselor. I wanted to um, have more to do in my day is all it is really was, so I started looking for places to volunteer. And my first degree is in graphic art. And so when I was looking for a place to volunteer, I met with Karen at MAGCAP. So I started just helping her and that's when I learned the mission of MAGCAP and that there are even people in my same area that are living in third world poverty right now. And so that was sort of the opening. As I started to go and I was filming for and helping them um, make different um, presentations we would go and try to fundraise and just spread awareness about the poverty in our um, in our county and um, I started to realize that these people needed a lot more than just a box of food or some free clothes or a class or two about um, healthy eating. That's when I knew that I needed to do something else and so I went back to school and I got a master's in marriage and family counseling. My goal was to start counseling, um, to make counseling available to people in poverty. I think we are on our fifth semester now. We started, I, I did a test and I did a, a mini group and I had four ladies sign up. Um, and so I go into that explaining to them I'm not trying to understand, I'm not trying to express that I know exactly what you've been through because I don't, but she does, and she does. She's lived here and she um, has been through a lot of the same things. She can understand. She one, I'll tell you the story of one lady that is just, uh, it's been really, inspiring to get to know her. It was in my first mini group and it was begging and pleading to get her to come and so it was really hard to get her to um, to convince her that this would be good um, but I, I knew she needed it and so she um, as she started to tell her story she had lost everyone in her family in separate instances, in separate deaths in about 18 months. The grief, this, she was coming out of the grief and the grief uh, was so um, strong in her life that she ended up hospitalized and she got down to about 90 pounds and she was wasting away from the grief. She gained weight but she was not able to get close to people. She took care, she was a caretaker for six grandchildren and she could not let them physically touch her because she was so, she had these walls built up so strong that she said, I could, I can feed them and I can take them to school, but they cannot touch me, I can't. She physically, the emotional toll that of not wanting to get close with people was playing out physically in her body and most precious lady, so sweet. She will really do anything she can to help you. Um, precious lady. And she came to the mini group and she started, she told her story and a couple, and the, at the beginning a couple of the ladies asked if they could hug her and she told them no. You can't, please don't touch me, I can't. By the end of that group, she let the first lady hug her. Um, as she told, she got closer to them, she um, was able to physically get closer. That group changed her whole life, gave her her children, those children back. At the same time, the, um, one, of, one of those grandchildren um, had a baby. And I told her that baby is your medicine because a baby has to be held. And so the physical contact she was able, that group sort of gave her the, um, the footing she needed to be able to have physical contact with this baby. 
and now she is, um, she'll give you the biggest hug you want. My thoughts are, I cannot change their situation. I cannot give them a new house and a, I cannot give them um, a past that is not completely broken. I can't change any of that for them. But what I can do is help them create relationships in their community so that they're not alone. They might be living in a really hard time, but they don't have to live there alone.